Hello everyone. So we are into the episode number two, day one of most expected topics for prelims 2020. So now I am going to do the topics from six to ten. From the for the beginning topics from one to five, you can watch the early YouTube video. Now in this session, I am going to discuss about six to ten topics. The sixth topic is BRI Summit 2019, Belt and Road Initiative. So there was an, a summit conducted regarding Belt and Road Initiative, which is a controversial for India and United States of America, whereas it's an ambitious project for China. So what is this Belt and Road Initiative we are going to discuss now? It has been two years since the Belt and road initiative forum was unveiled and Chinese president addressed to the second BRA forum was clear indication that Beijing is coming to terms with pushback this ambitious project has received. So they are very serious with respect to this Belt and Road Initiative. In this address, he included a stated commitment to transparency and sustainability of BRI projects and to greater debt sustainability in the financing model for BRI projects under new guiding principles. Why? Because the India, United States of America are very much skeptical, are accusing the China of absence of transparency, opacity involved in BRI initiative. Since 2017, India, USA and other countries have been critical of the lack of transparency with which many of the BRI projects were negotiated with government. Sri Lanka, the Maldives, Mal Malaysia had second thoughts on some of the infrastructure projects over fears of the debt trap. And allegations of corruption in BRI projects became election issues. In April last year, European Union ambassadors to Beijing issued a statement saying BRI, Belt and Road Initiative, ran counter to their agenda for liberalizing trade and pushed the balance of power in favor of subsidized Chinese companies. So there was an issue regarding the European Union and the Chinese. So the, the European Union is accusing the China. We are trying to liberalize the trade, but you people are giving subsidies and you are getting the trade, which is against the norms of the market. So every time the China is in forefront in market competition, in hijacking the market competition because of its subsidies, because of its very low price, sometimes because of its devaluation of its currency. So this has become a very controversial in day two and day one, every day. It's an everyday aspect it became. So this is the figure which mentions about Belt and Road Initiative, which covers Kambat of Gujarat, Kollam of Kerala, Sri Lanka, and Bangladesh, Chittagong, Bankush, Betkong, Konzai, Gongzong, Beijing. And this particular, this direction is called as this figure, this particular area is called as Belt and Road Initiative, the projects which are Pursued by the China. After tapping Central Asia, Southeast Asia, now China is looking forward towards European nations. But the Europe is against the China's intrusion into the Europe. Why? Because the European Union is very bothered about the serious rules and regulations, the standards which they need to maintain. After Central Asia and South Asia, Southeast Asia, China's biggest foray is into Europe. And the criticism of the European Union ambassadors and did not go unheeded by Beijing. China agreed to renegotiate terms and projects, reached out to regional organizations like Arab and African forums and the European Union. Where the Chinese Premier pledged to respect EU rules and standards at a summit of 17 plus 1 Central and Eastern European countries that are part of the Belt and Road Initiative. It is hoped that China will take this understanding forward and help build an infrastructure financing network that is equitable, transparent, especially for small states. So the European Union, the China is promising that we are not going to do anything against the transparency accountability. We, are, we will be entering into the European Union, but following the rules and regulations of the EU rules. And there is a Wuhan spirit where the China, where the COVID-19 born. What is the Wuhan spirit in India-China relations? 
the indian prime minister and the chinese president met informally at wuhan the capital of central china's hubei province in april 2018 everyone know that that was the first informal meeting and the second informal meeting we have very recently in mamalapuram it was in this summit where the two leaders are said to have developed a rapport with one another which may foreign policy commentators believe will draw new dimensions in future india china relations this understandings between india and china through their respective leaders is what is termed as wuhan spirit or wuhan consensus after this we had a mahalapuram informal summit at mahabalipuram of tamil nadu so this topic is very important for prelims point of view as well as, as well as mains point of view and i am expecting question belt and road initiative covering the places so i recommend you people so which i am teaching you i will give you the gist and you have to do little research like what is its geography so your duty is belt and road initiative is a connector between what what are all the what are all the countries involved into it what are all the cities involved into it and the second next topic is the next topic is kimberley process kimberley process you have to remember the word diamonds so kimberley whenever the word kimberley means something around diamonds the plenary meeting of the kimberley process certification scheme is being hosted by india from 18th to 20th november 22nd november 2019 in new delhi what is this kimberley process certification scheme so this involves this involves mainly with respect to conflict free areas whether the diamonds which we are getting from conflict free areas whether any human rights violations are happening in the process of the diamonds india has been actively involved in the development of the kimberley process as an important protocol in trade of diamonds which has ensured that 99.8% of the diamonds in the world are conflict free without any issue without any factions without any group conflict whether the diamonds are coming out the kimberley process is a commitment to remove conflict diamonds from the global supply chain conflict diamonds means rough diamonds used by rebel movements or their allies to finance conflict aimed at undermining legitimate governments so using the diamonds to finance the conflicts to undermine the legitimate governments if democratic government has been established in africa using this diamond money whether they are trying to topple the legitimate governments that is called as conflict so conflict free diamonds are not currently india exports around us 24 billion dollars worth of cut and polished diamonds which is expected to reach an export target of us dollar 1 trillion in the upcoming years we know that we are good at diamond sharpening diamond shaping in this industry the importance of kimberley process certification scheme is immense to india as more than 1 million people are directly employed by the diamond industry mainly in gujarat surat is called as a diamond industry the industry plays a pivotal role in sustaining the livelihood of this people so these diamonds play a major role as a livelihood in this particular areas kimberley process certification scheme what does it mean came into effect from 1st january 2003 and evolved into an effective mechanism for stopping the trade in conflict diamonds india is one of the founder members of the kpcs kimberley process certification scheme india had earlier chaired this kpcs in the year 2008 prelims point of view whether india chaired any time kimberley process certification scheme yes india chaired the kimberley process is a joint initiative involving government international diamond industry and civil society to stem the flow of conflict diamonds to stop the flow of conflict diamonds it also described in united nations security council resolutions at present kpcs has 55 members representing 82 countries including european union with 28 members it is chaired on a rotating basis by participating member that means everyone will get a chance so it is not monopoly the the chair will be contributed or will be participated or will be or will be agreed by among the group members it will be on rotating basis all the participating members will get the chance to become the head of kimberley process certification scheme the next topic is world heritage day the world heritage day is celebrated by the unesco united nations educational scientific and cultural organization every year from november 19th to november 25th one big celebration it is 
In India, the Archaeological Survey of India celebrates it. Its objective is to make people aware of the rich heritage and also strive for its preservation, rich heritage. The Archaeological Survey of India and several other museums organize programs highlighting the significance of ancient monuments and their preservation, the importance of ancient monuments. Why? Because these ancient monuments give us the importance of our culture, will remind us about our civilization, will remind us about our architecture, our sculpture. Various programs related to historical structures, tour places and cultural and traditional heritage of the country were initiated to celebrate the week. Several schools and colleges celebrated by organizing quiz and painting competitions. The heritage sites celebrated the week include Kutub Minar, Kashi Vishwanath Temple, Delhi Red Fort, Delhi Darbaj, Badra Gate among others. There are 38 UNESCO World Heritage Sites in India, which includes 30 cultural sites like architectures, sculptures, temples and seven natural sites and one mixed site. Jaipur is the latest addition to the list of UNESCO cultural heritage site. So I recommend you people to read 2019-2020 what are all the cultural heritage sites and natural heritage sites added into the UNESCO. Western disturbances. Western disturbances. Like for India, Western disturbances from Arabian Sea. Develop in the mid latitude north of Tropic of Cancer, not in the tropical region. Therefore, they are called as mid latitude storms or extra tropical storms. Extra tropical cyclones are also called as winter storms and blizzards. Western disturbances are also called as what? Extra tropical cyclones, which are also called as winter storms and blizzards. Western disturbances are low pressure systems embedded in western winds, westerlies that flow from west to the east. See, in geography, how the directions, how the flows will be determined, from which side they are flowing. If it is flowing from west to east, it is called as westerlies. If they are flowing from east to west, it is called as easterlies. So this western disturbance is because of the flow of the cyclones from west to east, westerlies. It is a term coined by Indian meteorologists for the weather phenomenon which is propagated from the west. The phrase western disturbance was first used in the published literature in 1947. However, its precursor winter disturbance was coined earlier in 1931. So this term is coined by Indian meteorologists, Indian Meteorological Department. How this westerlies arrive into India? Western disturbances began as a low pressure system. So when there is low pressure system, here, because of the warm water, there will be low pressure system. Because of this low pressure system, how it is going to affect? That originates in mid-latitude region near the Atlantic Ocean and Europe, west side of India. The low pressure typically forms over the Mediterranean Sea and travels around, uh, over Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan and Pakistan before entering into India, loaded with moisture, which results in blizzards. This moisture-laden western disturbances eventually come up against the Himalayas and get blocked. As a consequence, the moisture gets trapped and precipitation is shared in the form of snow and rain over northwest India and sometimes other parts of North India. So mainly this westerlies, western disturbances affects North India and northwest part of India. An average four to five western disturbances form during the winter season and the rainfall distribution and amount varies with every western disturbances. The word western refers to the direction from which they originate with regard to India. The word disturbance is used because the air within the low pressure system tends to be unstable or unstable. Sometimes when western disturbances become more intense in the Indian region, they can extend even up to 15 degrees north, resulting into rainfall up to north Maharashtra, Gujarat and entire Madhya Pradesh to the south. And the next very important topic is Jallianwala Bagh Masquerade. Very important. Jainal Wala Bagh's importance lies not in the numbers killed, but in what preceded it and what followed it. What is the reasons for the Jainal Wala Bagh and what is the consequences? Well, because we know that the hunter is a person who is responsible for this Jainal Wala Bagh. The Anarchy and Revolutionary Crimes Act of 1919, better known as Rowlett Act, came into force a month before the Muscari in Jainal Wala Bagh. It shocked most Indians who had expected to be rewarded not punished for willingly fighting alongside the British in the First World War. So actually the Indians should be rewarded because they are fighting on the side of British in the First World War, but they were being masquerade against those people itself. And the Punjabis were the people who were in the forefront supporting the British, but those people were being killed. The masquerade on April 13, 1919, Baisakhi Day, following unrest in Amritsar after protests against the Rowlett Act, Brigadier General Rignal Dyer 
took a strike force of 50 rifles and 40 kokri wielding gorkhas into an enclosed ground jalian wala bag where a peaceful public meeting of 50000 to 20000 was being held immediately without warning he ordered fire to be opened on the crowd without any without any order without any order without any uh, without any information without any information the crowd was been asked was been asked to go from the place because of which the people started roaming here and there they were moving here and there immediately and without warning he ordered fire to be opened on the crowd the firing of 1650 rounds was deliberate and targeted using powerful rifles at virtually point black range the firing resulted in death of several hundreds of people and many times more were wounded atrocity however did not stop at it several repressive measures followed after the brutal killing such as infamous crawling order the salam order public floggings arbitrary arrest torture and bombing of civilians by airplanes all under a wheel of strictly enforced censorship so atrocities this is one of the famous atrocities against indians so prelims point of view prelims point of view rovellet act 1919 every year it's a favorite question the rovellet act Officially known as Anarchial and Revolutionary Crimes Act 1919. Remember this name. Anarchial and Revolutionary Crimes Act 1919. And was passed in March 1919 by the Imperial Legislative Council. That was passed as per recommendation of the Rowlett Committee chaired by the Judge Sri Sidney Rowlett. This act authorized the government to imprison for a maximum period of two years without trial any person suspected of terrorism. This is what this point is very important. Government can imprison for a maximum period of two years without any trial. Without any trial. That means they will be having no facility to go for the court without any trial. The act provided a speedy trial of the offenses by a special cell that consisted of three high court judges. There was no court of appeal above the planner. So there is no appeal. This panel would also accept the evidences which were not even acceptable in the Indian Evidence Act. So some special evidences will also be taken. Like the evidence of police should not be taken, but the evidence of police can be taken under this particular rule. It also placed severe restrictions on the freedom of the press. That was widely condemned by Indian leaders and the public. The bill came to be known as Black Bills. This particular bills of be called to be called as Rule Act. Yes, for the daily current affairs, you can join in our Telegram channel. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.